Not to uh, live up to after David's introduction. Um, I've, um, I've been asked to speak on uh, this topic. It was actually um, uh, David who suggested the title, which is uh, probably a good thing. Um, so what are the pros and cons of signing your body up to be chronically suspended at ultra low temperatures uh, when a fatal disease strikes? Now, had it been left to me to think of my own title, I probably wouldn't have included something with pros and cons. When he suggested it, I thought, okay, that's probably actually a good idea. So, um, despite the fact that I'm clearly very biased myself, um, being uh, neck deep in uh, cryonics, I will endeavour to give you a what's and all overview uh, of cryonics uh, situation globally and um, in the UK specifically. Um, I'll leave you obviously to form your own decisions at the end, as so I'm sure you will from the material I give you and also from uh, your own research thereafter. Um, one final issue that I'll touch on later is the issue of when a fatal disease strikes. Um, cryonics as a science is something that will... Going on to the next slide, actually. Um, it's essentially about stopping the clock in terms of biological processes. Death is a process. A lot of people think of death as an event. Somebody's living, then they die. Um, this is not really the case. Um, death is a series of markers. You know, um, breathing has stopped, heart has stopped, brain has stopped. Um, science is pushing back the boundaries of what is considered dead. It has been doing so for around the past um, hundred years. And a uh, hundred years ago, if you stopped breathing, they would bury you. Um, Fifty years ago, if your heart stopped beating, they would cremate you. Um, I think it was around the late 50s that they um, really got CPR into um, mainstream medical acceptance. And this wasn't considered raising the dead. This was now considered just a matter of uh, good medical practice. Um, cryonics, in my opinion, is simply pushing that boundary just a little bit further. Um, to what people are now calling informa information theoretic death. That is to say, um, death now really is the point where what has been within that person's mind cannot be retrieved. Um, there are a few objections to that as an idea. Uh, I'll touch on those later. Um, but yeah. principally, the way that cryonics will go about uh, arranging this, cryonic suspension, uh, is, as the name suggests, um, cooling the patient down to very low temperatures. Um, by very low temperatures, um, we take a patient down to 190, minus 196 degrees uh, Celsius, um, stored in liquid nitrogen. This is done first, um, first quickly during the very initial stage, and then slowly towards the end to minimise the uh, freezing damage. The, um, not just a uh, time constraint, but also the sort of cryoprotectant fluids and um, a process called vitrification, uh, which is essentially the process of making the body into a glass-like substance. Um, you may, if um, uh, you're not um, a scientific um, professional, as indeed I, I'm not, I'm not professionally, I work in um, health and social care. I um, look after adults with physical and mental disabilities. My interest in cryonics is an um, amateur interest, um, though in the true sense of the word, it is amateur in that I love the field, therefore I research as much as I can um, into it. People will tend to ask, um, are we there yet? You know, how much of this is possible? In terms of um, vitrification, um, you may wonder why should we um, want to make the body into a glass-like substance. Uh, this is because of a very common um, objection to cryonics as a principle. They say, what about freezing damage? Um, you know, if I freeze a strawberry and I take it out and I try to thaw it, it's, it's just mush. That's no good. And this is true. Um, ice crystals form in between cells, destroying everything. Um, with the use of proper cryoprotectants and a proper cool-down procedure, we can avoid that, um, that happening to, not completely yet, we intend to, um, but to a fair degree. This is done in nature, 
Um, there are certain animals that use natural cryoprotectants. Most often, um, these are sugars existing within their blood. Um, on a low level, within the field of cryonics, we use um, glycerol as a simple perfusate. Um, this will not get it all the way to vitrification, but this will stop a large amount of the freezing damage that uh, would otherwise occur. Um, as I've put up here, we have around 200 patients cryopreserved between the main organisations. Um, that is to say that there are two large cryonics organisations and a couple of smaller cryonics organisations at the moment who are providing um, cryonics services and storage facilities. Uh, CI, uh, Cryonics Institute, uh, which was um, uh, founded as an institute in 1976, though it actually has its roots in the American Cryonic Society um, of 1969. Uh, that is when it was incorporated. It was actually the same people involved with CI who were involved um, with the um, very first suspension um, back in 1966, before any of the companies were actually incorporated. This was um, a very crude suspension. Um, it was practically uh, what we call a straight freeze. Um, none of the uh, gleaming, um, shiny machines that go ping that we uh, enjoy these days. Um, at that point in 1966, the bigger problem then was public acceptance. Uh, there were uh, you know, doctors, funeral directors and relatives at the time who were saying, no, this is wrong, this is evil, this is impossible, this is a lunatic fairy tale. Uh, this is any number of things other than a sensible, viable course of action. Um, so that really was quite a, a landmark event, even though it essentially amounted to cooling somebody down in a very crude fashion and um, freezing them first in water ice and then in dry ice. Um, that uh, person is still in suspension um, and they have now been moved to a um, more modern uh, cryostat with um, alcohol, um, so they're now suspended in, uh, in liquid nitrogen. Ironically, being the um, first person into cryonic suspension, they'll quite possibly and probably be the last person out, um, for the simple obvious reason that because our preservation methods are improving over time, those who have been suspended most recently are um, going to need the least amount of um, fixing afterwards. Um, and we do view the body as a machine, and machines can be fixed. Um, actually, my, my fiancée is also a cryonicist, and her father is very negative regarding this. He is um, the very traditionalist, bearded, materialist skeptic. If you imagine James Randi, that's for those of you who know James Randi, mm -hmm. uh, that's practically my fiancée's father. Mm -hmm. and, um, I said to him, do you believe in any kind of God, supernatural, paranormal, anything like that? He says, no. I said, good, me neither. Um, so a body is a machine, are you agreed with me so far? He said, yes, that's, uh, you know, that's my understanding as well. Okay, um, machines can be fixed um, given enough time and resources. Um, to have a machine that is actually beyond fixing, no matter how much time and resources you put into it, would actually require some supernatural force stopping that from occurring. Um, and again, I do include that caveat, with enough time and resources, but that's what Cryonix is there to buy, essentially, is the time and the resources come along of their own accord with the progresses of um, the uh, cutting-edge professionals in the various respective fields of transhumanism. Um, well, I say we have 91 patients with CI at the moment. There's a similar figure with uh, Alcor. I don't actually have their uh, up-to-date figure. I tried to find it, but uh, they didn't have it to hand. And then there are um, six patients, last time I checked, with Cryorus, which is a very young organization uh, in Russia. And uh, TransTime, I think, only have about five patients of their own because they open the doors and then close them again very shortly afterwards. They're not taking on new patients. Um, it is true to say um, that there are no patients, human or non-human mammals, because um, CI and alcohol do both offer the cryopreservation of pets, um, as well as the obvious select of people doing um, cryogenic research will 
work with various different animals to test various different uh, processes before uh, using them on human patients.